going to talk about the evolution of Android identification. First, we'll approach it uh, from the UI point of view. Then we'll discuss some UX and product decision we have to make around notification. And finally, we'll see a little bit of implementation strategy and API you could use. A little bit more about myself. Uh, I recently started a new startup called TraceBK. And our main goal is to recreate a bank from SME for str from scratch. To give you more details, as I say, it will be specifically designed for SME. And we'll try to do the banker job as it should be done. That is to say, we'll try to help the customer rather than selling him products he doesn't really need. We'll start from scratch, so no legacy, uh, which is one of the main problems in the banking industry right now. And finally, we'll always try to defend our three core values, trust, technology, and ethics. And if you're interested, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach to me after the talk, and you can uh, find all the offer online. Back to the talk, let's start with what is a notification? So to be very clear today, we are only going to talk about this pixel rectangle that appears in the drawer, and only that. And if we look at the definition in the documentation, uh, we can see that a notification is a message you can display to the user outside of your application's normal UI. Both the notification area and the notification drawer are system control areas that the user can view at any time. And on this definition, I want really to focus on two main points. The first one is outside of your application, and the second one is can view at any time. That's really important because that's really where a notification brings the more value. It brings two core values, I would say. The first one is what we call awareness. It means it will allow you to make your app visible outside of your application, uh, and you will be able to remind users that you exist. Uh, don't forget about me. I can help you with your task today. The second one is quick access. Uh, so basically, your user will be able to, to have actions without having to trigger your app, which is really great. So quick access means quick actions and also shortcuts. So it will make them save times and save clicks. So it will just improve the user experience. OK, now that we define notification, let's see some history. So first of all, notification has been introduced in Android since API level 1, actually. So it's almost 10 years now. And I found this. Uh, gorgeous gem, I'd say, at the 12th page of Google Image. So as we can see, at the beginning of Android, it was really sought for text messages. And if we jump directly to Gingerbread, we can see that it's still very simple, and it's still through, uh, sought for text messages or emails. So uh, a little bit of 50 shades of gray on the UI part. Then if we jump to Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, we bring the Holo theme. And we can see that Google figured out that notification could be much richer. Uh, they provided, uh, we could use a big image. Here is a Doricon icon. And we can also, sorry about that. And we can also uh, add a subtext. Then with Jelly Bean, uh, nothing changed from the design perspective, but Google added the new notion called actions. So, this is the label and the action. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. Before that, we could only have only one action per notification. And right now, we'll be able to, to really build richer notifications that will be really easy to master, and user will really take power over it. In this version, they also introduced a notion of priority. Uh, we'll go into more detail, but we'll see that being able to sort the notification in the drawer, having the best notification at the top is really important. Then KitKat, no change, so let's continue. And we arrive at Lollipop. So Lollipop, welcome to Material Design. It's white background. Uh, and you can see that a lot of change. And what I want to focus on is that the icon of the applications that triggers the notification, here it's the droid, change again of position. First it was on the top left at the beginning, then it, it, it went at the bottom right, and now it's close to the top left. 
Uh, in this version, they also added the category, once again, to help prioritizing the notification in the drawer. And they also added the possibility to group the notification by providing a summary. Uh, and it. Then Marshmallow, once again, no change. Let's continue. And we were at Nougat. And as you can see, Nougat changed almost everything. So if we run the animation, you will see that, OK, everything changed, basically. Uh, the notification has more space, it's clearer, I would say, and I feel it's more material design. But as you can see, they change again the notification, the application responsible for the notification, here at Zoicon, and they added it at the top left corner. It's really important because we can see that in Western Europe or in America, most of people start reading by the top left. And it's really important because when you start reading by the top left, it means that the, the, the most important information is probably at the top left. And in that case, that's the, information, that's the application that triggers the notification. So it's really important to be able to identify the application that triggers the notification. And they also deleted uh, the action icon, so it was a cross, uh, to have more space available for action, giving in, yeah, action is really a huge pattern and, uh, as it's really important for notification. And now comes Android Oreo. So when I started writing this slide, Oreo was not out. Now that it is, uh, I integrated some slide to explain what it changed. On the uh, UI change, nothing. So we can see that Google changed the UI layout every two years. Let's see next year. Uh, and they added an important notion that I want, that we will see later, is channels. It's really important because it will give more power to the user to be able to fine tuning the notification experience he has. But before implementing a notification, developers must realize that creating a notification is a topic that must, very, that must be very well thought. Uh, it's, why is it important, you may ask, to become a good citizen about notification on Android? Well, it's pretty simple. Humans have a form of notification since a long time. If you think about it, letters was a form of notification, right? Telegrams was too. Phone calls are still a form of notification. SMS, emails, and even Batman as a form of notification with this project, all right? And the thing is, all this notification form transform day by day into spam. We receive a lot of spam in our mailbox. We receive a lot of phone calls or SMS that are st still spam. Emails as the spam folder that we never look at it. And even Batman, I'm pretty sure, is a bit tired having to save the world every single night. So yeah, that's really important to not become um, a, a spam. And if we are not careful, if, if, if every developer is not careful about it, Android notification will become a spam also. What we must realize it is a user has probably, I don't know, 60 or 50 apps installed on this phone. If all the apps trigger notification around the same moment, he will get 50 notifications, and no one can read through 50 notifications. It's impossible. And this is where the spam effect will come from. So your notification may not be a spam, but it will contribute to the to this spam effect. So before implementing a notification, you must be very careful about, is it a good idea? Does it solve the problem? Is it a good pattern to, to, to match what I want, really want to do? If you don't, it, will it can create several problems. The first one is disruption. Um, I think we all encounter the situation where we say, OK, I will stay away from my phone. It, it cannot stop vibra vibrating. OK, I need to focus on my work. And this is not normal, actually. Uh, this shows that there is a problem in behavior. We should be able to have uh, our experience, always our, our, have our phone with us, without having to, OK, there is too many notification. Then there is also this famous clear all button that I think you know about it. As I said, if we all trigger our notifications, you have 50 of them, then user will probably clear all the notifications. And 
if, I don't know, you like about the category and your question is, is not really sorted at the, at the top, your store might, might lose this information and never known about. The information is important, but it lost it because it was the spam effect. And finally, uh, the other problem I have is bad timing. Uh, if you trigger the new question not at the right moment, the problem is uh, the user will probably swipe it and say, okay, I will do it later, and it can forget. So this is a huge problem that uh, some applications had, have, and that I had. So to solve this problem, there are several stuff that we can do. The first one is we can try to reduce the amount of notification, mainly by grouping them thanks to the group feature uh, to avoid or at least limit the spam effect. We can also use categ priorities, categories, to help the system sort out the notification and show the most important ones first. Then you can also add metadata to your notification. I will s s show an example later, but you can enrich, uh, enrich yeah, your, your, your notification with metadata that would help the system knows it's important. And finally, with Android O, they added this notion of importance. So they deprecated priority, basically, and they say, okay, now it's important. So they needed a new notion to start from scratch. And finally, still on the same frame, they added the channel, as I said earlier. So a channel is mandatory in Android O, so a notification cannot be triggered if you don't have a channel associated with it. And it's basically two main screens. The first one is you can have access to all the channels of, of your application. And there are really great features. So you have the list here. And you can say, OK, I don't want to see any notification from this app. So the user will be able to say, OK, this, this app is bad. It's guilty. I remove the notification from there. From there. Uh, and then if you click on a channel, you get to the second screen. And in this screen, you can see that you can also block all the notifications from a specific channel. So if you have a channel that is dedicated to marketing and one is that is dedicated to more product notification, you can say, OK, I don't want to see the, the marketing ones. You can also, the user can also say, OK, I don't want it to stand. I don't want it to vibrate. Uh, I don't want the bad icon. He has the power to change everything, basically. So now that we have seen good practices on notification, another aspect uh, I want to focus on today when designing your product and based on notification is how can I help Android make sure that my notification is a good one? And an uh, easy solution is to categorize them. So as an example, uh, we'll project several UK I took uh, on this graph. The first axis is how painful is your notification. The second one is how urgent is the information you need to provide to the user. So I took some app, you probably all know, and we'll enter category by category. So the first category is urgent and fun. It's usually a good case for a notification. We'll find the agenda app saying, OK, this is the best, the, your best friend's birthday. Uh, it, there is Trainline, uh, which is a, a train app. They say, OK, your next holiday is, 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 is planned. You can, you can go. A text message, for instance, from your wife, or a WhatsApp discussion with your friend. And something that is really important in this category is 99% of the time, a notification that is urgent and fun for the user is a notification that is related to uh, someone that is close to him. So that's why this category is called VIP of your life. It means that if that's someone that is important for you, the notification will be important for you. Then you have what is fun, but non-urgent. Here we find uh, the news, TV shows, games, and we also have social networks. Oh, sorry. And here we go. And we also have, uh, as I say, no, uh, social networks. And as you may notice, I put Snapchat first on the, on the chart because actually, even if uh, they are, they are, this is a social network, they created this urgency by their concept. So they are saying, okay, my notification is really important because the user 
has a little time to, to, view, to see it. So I call this prog procrastination, so which means non-urgent, but fun. Then there is this category, which is urgent and painful. Here we find the low battery. Uh, your bank account, this is actually bank in France, bank account saying, OK, you are going bankruptcy, do something. Uh, or your calendar notification, which wish you, you yeah, don't, don't forget uh, to do this. You don't want to do it, but don't forget. Uh, yeah, and this is notification. You, will, you really need to act quickly uh, about it. Plug your phone, pay your rent. I don't know, but that's the kind of thing that you need to act quickly. So I also added the, the fun uh, Friday night email from work or the famous ad channel Slack message from another time zone. This is the kind of thing that you say, OK, I don't want to read this, but I need to, to read it. I need it. I call this livelihood. So yeah, uh, it's urgent, it's painful, but you got to do it. And finally, the last category is painful and unurgent. And to be really honest, I think that if you feel that you are in this case or close to this case, most of the time, a notification is not a good solution. It's not a good pattern. Uh, so as an example, I added this uh, Android upgrade notification. Nobody got time for this. The morning apps upgrade you got every morning. Uh, I, at least who really cares? I mean, I don't read it, to be honest. Uh, I also did the map notification that keep asking you, take a picture, post it. I mean, I'm with my friend. I have other things to do, sorry. Or oh, there is Google Photos that always push me to make a montage about my cat with the 10 pictures I, I took yesterday. So yeah, that's not something I want to do. That's something, when I trigger the app, I want a reminder saying, OK, I could do that. That's nice. But that's not something I need to, need to, to know right now, right? There is no urgency about it. So I call this category nagging. So to be honest, yeah, it's really justified to, from the user experience point of view to do notification in that case. So from this graph, we can extract two main principles to evaluate notification, as I said. The first one is be relevant. Is your information is up to date? Is it important to use user? The second one is be legitimate. Uh, you don't want to lie about your GNC. You want to have the notification display at the exact right time the user needs it. It can be tricky, but that's such a wow effect. Like, OK, this is exactly what I needed. And to help categorizing notification, Google enforce in Android O uh, an order. It's official now. It's not a secret source. The first one are all the major ongoing events. So you will see the travel with maps, uh, music playing, phone calls. This is the thing that you are currently doing, so they are first. Then you have this category, people to people, that is finally the VIP of your life, meaning that that's what is important for you, the people that are close to you. Then you have the general, where you can find everything, and you have the by the way. To be honest, once again, if you're in the by the way, probably your notification is not a good reason. Probably someone pushed you to do it. Just most of the time, by the way, not a good idea. To illustrate a little bit what I said, uh, I will take a use case. Uh, so as I said, I'm currently working at TrustBK, but before that, I was working at a startup called Captain Train. Uh, we have been acquired by Trainline, and uh, I left Trainline now. But this is where, what I work on, uh, so that's why I took it as an example. So let's see what you, we did uh, with uh, our notification uh, experience. So does anyone know what Trainline is or Captain Train? Not so much. OK, so basically, we, are, uh, we sell train ticket online. So we try to provide the best user experience possible when you want to buy your ticket. But it doesn't stop here. We also want to be with you during your travel. So we try to be with you when you need it and to provide information that could help you during your travel. So it's by train. So most of the people here, I guess, are German. So they probably know about train. And when you need to board the train, at least in France, you need a reservation, and you need to arrive 20 minutes before you travel at the station. Uh, so 
When you arrive at the station, all you need to know is which platform I should go, which, seat, uh, which carriage I'm on, and which seat I sit. And in fact, this is exactly what we try to provide here as a summary. So you have all the information you need without opening the app. Then once, so we are legit, both legitimate and relevant, right? But then the train leaves the station. We will remove the old notification and we'll add a new notification answering the famous question, when do we arrive? And once again, we try to be as relevant as possible, so we'll try to retrieve real-time da data to make sure that the data display notification is always up to date. And then, once you arrived, we'll remove this notification and we'll display a notification which is, have a great day, uh, with a nice message. The thing is, we display this notification only for 15 minutes after our arrival. The main reason for that is because we are neither, f neither legitimate, neither relevant. But it was a good way. It could totally, we could totally remove this notification, to be honest. But it was a good way to interact with our user and having some fun. So, but you need to have some fun, but not too much. So 15 minutes was OK for us. And finally, if I had to implement it now on Android O, this would be probably in another channel. It's not during the travel, it's before the travel. When your train is canceled, you want to have the information as soon as possible because you, need, you will have to change your train, cancel your trip, this kind of thing. So this, this implies some stuff you, are, you really need to do now. So that's why it's another channel and it's not scheduled as the other one. Well, OK. No. We are sure that we have a good notification. We are a good use case. We know the UI. Let's trigger it. So trigger is the simple part. You create a new notification. The only three information required, mandatory are small icon, content title, and content text. This is not entirely true since Android O, you also need to provide the channel ID. You will use the notification compact uh, and as it was illustrated, I think, at the, uh, at the beginning of the talk, the notification really changed over time. So Google provided the compact stuff to help you handling the change of API. And then you can notify it with notification manager compact, and you notify with an ID and the notification. But there are several types of triggering. The first one is local event. Uh, so local events. Most of the time, you are just reacting to a click. Download this, update this, posting a tweet, this kind of thing. The second one is really much more interesting. It's based on the alarm manager. And as I said, being able to provide the right information at the right moment is really a wow effect for a user. So you can count on the alarm manager for that. So contact alarm manager is a system service, so you get it by the context. And then you do a set exact with a type, a trigger at milis, and an operation. Well, it's not that easy. Since Google didn't provide the compact, but it changed over, over the API. When you have Marshmallow, what you want to do is do a set exact and allow while idle to make sure you wake up the device, even if it's DOS mode. Then if you have KitKat, you will do the set exact. And if you are before KitKat, you do the set. So this is something you have to write yourself. Then you have the type. So there are two main categories of types. The first one is linked to system current time milis, which is the time since boot, including sleep. And there is a system clock dot LFC real time, which is a wall clock time in the UTC. Then there is a trigger at milis, which is a, a, a long in millisecond. The thing is, you have to be sure that it matches the type you choose. And then there is this operation, which is a pending intent. It has a simple MPE, right? Get activity, get service, get broadcast. And I want to focus on pending intent because I see a lot of error uh, about it, and I think it's really an interesting use case. First, is it that simple? Uh, let's, let's play a game. Do you think that this two pending intents are equals? So you have an intent, which points to a main activity. And then you, 
you create two pending instances, one with uh, a context, an ID, the same instance in both cases, and, uh, and the same flag, as are equals. Yes, no? Yes, yes they are. If you change the ID, I know we have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, five. Does it equal? No, it's not equals. And if we don't, if we don't have the same instance now, it's just two intents that point to the same activity. It's equals, yes. And now if I add extra, extra one, and extra two, is it equals? That's the trick, it's equals. In fact, the extra is not part of the equals of an intent. And that's where we'll see some problems that will arrive later. If we have two categories, do you think it's equals? So it's two different categories. It's not equals. And in fact, you just have to look at the filter equals on the intent class, and we'll see that the action, the data, the type, the package, the component, and the categories are part of the equals, but not the extra. And then, because of that, it can, get tr it can be trickier. What we need to know is that a pending intent will survive app upgrade. It also survive reboot, but it also survive app upgrade. So let's, let's take this example. You, you release your app in N version. Then you register a pending intent in the alarm manager. The pending intent is really simple. It points to an intent which is, it points to main activity with an extra which is extra one. Then you do some huge refactoring in your app because you need to work. And you change the extra one in extra two because, yeah, it was bad naming or for whatever other reason. Then you release your app, N plus one. And then the alarm manager triggers the intent, right? Because you register in 10 days, it, tri it, it, it triggers the alarm. And then you have this, then what it triggers? It triggers the pending intent, the first one you did, right? With extra one. And you have this NPE, and you say, OK, there is a problem is Android. Uh, it, it cannot happen. And that's true, in fact. If you look at the N plus one application, it cannot happen. You register the good pending intent with the right for the right activity with the right extra. But since the pending intent survive up, up upgrade, you still have the old one with extra one. So when you look at the extra two, it's empty and then you crash. So it means that when you add pending intents, it must be considered as an external API. Let's say, OK, we need to cancel all the pending intents I had before and register them again in the alarm manager. That is the kind of stuff we add, and we add uh, some bugs with this at Captain Train, because we are using the alarm manager to trigger at the right moment for, the board, for boarding the train. And if we, didn't, if we weren't careful about it, we had a lot of a crash, which is really tricky to understand. Finally, the last triggering is real time. So GC GCM or Firebase, I will not go into much detail, but as a piece of advice, the first one is use extensively the group, uh, because if you trigger a notification every time you have a new message and the backend has a bug, I don't know why, you will get a lot of a notification, a lot of message. If you have a, a logic inside your app that you can group them and say, okay, either a summary or discard the last one, it will be it will be better. Then we have this: be careful about marketing abuse. I mean, I'm speaking to developers, so you probably already know. But when you open the door, everything ran, everything enters. So we really need to be careful about it because, as a developer, I feel I have the responsibility for my product, so that's something I care about. And finally, don't forget to remove notification, especially with GCM, because that's the kind of problem I have. I have a tablet that I use maybe once a month, but when I use it, I, when I turn it on, basically I get 100 messages that, never, that the backend never cancel, and it's really bad because I clear all, and maybe in this clear all, there is a good notification. To help us with this kind of problem and triggering, Google added two features in Android O, Oreo, sorry, I'm not used to. Uh, the first one is Snooze, uh, which is great. It doesn't prevent you to register at the, right in the, uh, at the right time with the alarm manager, but it can help. If your user is busy, you can just swipe it and say, okay, I want to see that in 15 minutes. I would have time for this moment. 
And finally, there is this timeout, which is really great because you can remove automatically the notification for you, uh, which is, for instance, really helpful uh, in our case when we want the last notification when we arrive at the station to last for 15 minutes. We could just use the timeout in that case. Okay, so now a little bit of styling. Styling is pretty easy, actually. Uh, we have this root style, which, which is called notification.style, and we have other styles that are, let's say, uh, important use case, big picture style, inbox style, big text style, messaging style, and media style. And if we look at the documentation of material design, it's pretty easy, actually. It looks exactly like, uh, like, you, like you have on your phone, I guess. The big text, you can expand it and have the body of the email, for instance. A big picture for a screenshot, you expand it, you have the full picture. And even the media has their own uh, layout because you want, all the, you want the user to have good reflexes when you're uh, on the media player, so you want to retrieve the same button and the same experience. If you don't find what you are looking for as a layout in this, you can use decorated custom view style. Decorated custom view style is great because you can provide your custom view, but you will still keep the decorated items of a notification, the headers, the actions. So it means you can still have the layout of the system, of the guidelines, and just provide a custom notification. If you really, really need to do something uh, particular, specific at your, at your use case, you can use remote views. Uh, does everyone know what is a, re a remote views? Yeah, not so much. Okay, a remote views basically is a view. It's encapsulated view, but the thing is, a notifi your notification will run in the system you process, right? So if your code is running in this process, it means it has all the permission and all the privileges of the system UI process, and this is not possible. So they encapsulate your views in a remote views, and this remote views makes sure that it's safe and that you are not accessing something you, did, you, you don't have the right to do. So it's a simple uh, security layer. And, it's, and you can use it with the set content on the con notification builder. But as a piece of advice, I would say avoid remote views as, pos as much as possible. Because as we saw at the beginning of this talk, um, the notification layout really changed over time. So if you start by doing something custom, you will need to do something custom for Nougat, for Lollipop, and for the Holoseam uh, with KitKat, for instance. So, I mean, it's not impossible, but the system is already do it, doing it for you. So, I w yeah, it would be better to use the default styling or the span. So Span is probably start to be well known about develop Android developers. It's a very powerful API. It's API, sorry. It's available everywhere. And, it's, and you can really create rich text really easily. Uh, the thing is, it's a good, uh, I have a good example here again. Um, in that case, for instance, we could totally do one, edit, one text view, a second text view, and a third text view. And it would work, we provide a custom view, and it will be good. The thing is, uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, if you can rely on the style of the, uh, the default style, you want to do it. So in that case, you can provide the spinable, and we will be able to strike through and disable the part of the text we want. And it's actually really, really simple to do it. First, you create a spinable string. Then you add it to span, so a strike through span, uh, which goes from zero to the end, and with, which is both um, inclusive-inclusive, meaning that you take all the characters. You do exactly the same thing for foreground color spans. That will be the same co the color of the text with an alpha, uh, w which makes it look a bit disabled. And finally, you just set it on the text view, or you just provide it to your notification, and that's it. So instead of having three text views, you just have one view, and, and yeah, spinable are really great because they are available everywhere. If you have a chart sequence as, a, as an input, it means that you can put a spinable in this. So it matches for the shortcuts, the new API Google added last year, uh, for notification, for widget, uh, I don't know, for everything. 
Okay. Um, so uh, we still have some time, so I will go through some other tips uh, I could provide. The first one is don't forget that an notification is transient, meaning that if your user lose it, he needs to be able to find the same information somewhere in your app. It may look silly, but sometimes I find, uh, I find applications that where the information is only available as a notification and I can't find it anywhere else in the app. Second one has been repeated over and over, but it's be patient, meaning if you want user to see a, noti a notification that goes through, uh, that display uh, uh, an image, for instance, wait for downloading the image before showing the notification. You don't want to, the user to click, to have to wait. You want a smooth, a smooth transition and a smooth, uh, a smooth flow. Also, there is this cleanup problem. Uh, for instance, if you are looking at your mail, uh, you have notification for your mail, but you go through your mail through the app and you look at uh, an email details, right? What you want, you want to, de you want to delete the notification. And for this, activity has a write method, which is on user interaction. It will allow you to be, tr to be cool when, uh, the when the user has interacted with your, uh, your activity, a scroll, a click, whatever. And at this moment, we can consider that this notification has been seen. The, thing, you know, the, the, the other one is not so much known. The, it was about the metadata. Remember I, I talked about earlier? On Android, on the notification, you, can, you have this method called add person that has been uh, added in Lollipop. And actually, you can provide a string URI that uh, points to a contact of your phone. And if this contact is marked as VIP, the notification will be at the top of the, of the drawer. So there is other method like this, but you can provide information thanks to this, and the Android will use it to sort out the notification. And finally, there is this method called uh, syncs. Oh, that is, sorry, there is this syncs multi devices, uh, which is really important. Uh, you want to synchronize the notification. If I read it on the where, I want it removed on the on the phone. If I read it on the phone. Maybe I don't need it on the tablet. It depends on the use case, but most of the time, that's something that should not be uh, uh, quickly sought. OK, so now we are at the conclusion. And as a takeaway, I would say that first, be a good citizen. As I said, uh, Android will be greater because of this. Uh, don't lie on legitimacy and urgency. It's really important that the user can trust you. Uh, when you say that this is urgent, they want to rely on you. Be relevant, uh, meaning that that's something really important. Uh, don't be a spam. Know your API. Uh, really, there are a lot of APIs that are not so well known among Android uh, community and that are really great, uh, which, can, which, which are really powerful. And finally, try to follow uh, system guidelines as much as possible. Uh, on the long term, it will be a, a huge save for, for your app. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you.